Mr. Hodge is president of Triad Woodcarvers. We're here tonight to talk about carving the, the comfort bird. This is one of the projects that we do as a club to uh, give away to Ronald McDonald House patients and also the parents or anyone that is convalescing or, or would give them some comfort to. I use a two by two block of wood, four inches long, and this is my pattern that I use. This is the top pattern and the pro, of course the profile. I've already sawed this comfort bird out. We make these available at Klingspor, who sponsors our club, and, and free of charge. So anyone can go and get one of these, and you can start carving. Now the tools I use is very simple. There's a, a what I use a larger knife for roughing out, and a detailed knife for the finish work. And I also use a, a, a small gouge, and I'll show you how that how I use that later. I'll start uh, roughing this out now. I'll start by rounding the corners all the way around. And you want to leave the beak and the tail for last. So I, but I'll smooth everything else from there. And I'll just, and I like to start around that neck because that's where you're going to see where you're going to need to remove most of the wood. So we start off by just rounding all these sharp edges off, trying to get a round, uniform, uh, shape to the bird itself and we want to leave the tail and the beak last because because they are so thin they they're subject to break if we ha if we handle them too much so for now we leave those and I'll just start rounding now we just continue rounding Uh, now I've already carved some of these in advance showing the different stages so I want to show you what it will look like later as you, as you as you have rounded off some more and the final flat part on this bird is, is there now again I go right up to the beak but I don't mess with the beak just yet. I'll just go right up to it. Now I have the rough shape of the bird. It's looking fairly consistent all the way around. So now I want to remove all of the saw marks. You want to continue rounding and, and get further toward the sides and, the, and bring the bring it together in the center so that you've removed all the saw marks from the bird. Uh, uh, you see I've continued rounding but I also have, I, I still have some saw marks here in this area and, and along, right along the sides. So we want to continue removing re and remove those remembering to try and keep the shape consistent. As you're removing these saw marks, uh, step back and look at, the, look at the bird from all directions. You may see that everything is symmetrical. If you need to remove uh, a little from one side to match the other side, that's, uh, right now is the time to do that. Now I leave the very center of this, I leave a flat spot that gives the bird it, so it rests good on a, on a flat surface. And, but I'll remove all these other saw marks. When we started out with this bird, uh, you notice that most of your wood is coming off in this area around the back of the head and neck. And that's where I like to use the gouge. Now, because I can take this gouge and go across the grain and get it rounder, right around in that, in those, on those sides. 
and that will give me a more rounder head maybe a little bit more separation from the head and body now i usually use a number nine gouge uh, it can be anywhere from a quarter inch to three eighths or maybe even a half wide you'll still get that same curvature around the back where the neck meets the shoulders yeah like so and uh, now using this gouge is not mandatory uh, you can accomplish the same thing with a knife but I find it's just a little quicker now I'll go back with the knife and I will smooth that transition that I just made Now at this point, I've, we've got the, every, all of our saw marks off except the tail and the neck. Now I'm switching to my fine detail knife at, to finish up the bird. And I will use this the rest of the way out. And now I want to make that head as round as possible. Give it a good shape. Make sure everything is symmetrical. Okay, at this stage, we are now finally ready to start working on the beak and the tail. All we have to do with the tail is just round these, these sharp corners. Now in rounding this off, uh, you'll notice the grain is going long ways in, this, in the bird. And because you have this little hump here, you need to go in the middle and go in both directions. If you don't, you'll take off a big chunk of wood there and will splinter off. Just to make myself clear here, this, this curvature will cause the knife to dig into the grain. So you need to start at the top of that hump and go in each direction so you don't chip that off. And just take small cuts. Now that I've got the shape of the tail pretty good, I'm going in and just going across this top and bottom of the bird to get rid of the saw marks. So now we'll move on to the beak. And you notice that as we've left the beak alone, it has four square sides to it. So here we will just start taking off the corner with easy, tiny, tiny, push cuts and just rounding the beak starting at all four corners of the beak working out toward the tip of the beak rounding as you go doesn't take much at all to get that beak in shape now we have the bird all roughed out it has a good shape to it now we're going to get to the fun part sanding now I hate sanding but uh, comfort bird, it's important that we sand them to get them smooth because that's where the, the comfort in it lays. And I start out with 100 grit sandpaper. I move up to 120, 150, 180, and 220. You'll do most sanding with the 100 grit. You'll want to get rid of all the cut marks all your little high high spots what we call the facets of the cut i can't overemphasize too much the use of the first step in the the roughest grit you want to do more of that than any other the other three times because if you get it you get all the rough stuff off with the first grit then the other four grits will go very easily I've, I've used my last, my uh, finest grit sandpaper now, and I've got this bird in really good condition. I, I don't see any more scratches on it. It's got a good feel to it. You can hold it in your hand. 
uh, in several different ways. It just feels good. Now we're ready for the finish. You make a choice whether you want to leave it natural looking or if you want to paint it. You can paint it, just stain it. Uh, there's many, any, any number of things you can do to make it better. I like the natural look of wood. So at this point, uh, rather than paint this bird, I would dip it in boiled linseed oil. Uh, you dip it and let it dry and, and uh, wipe off any of the excess and let it dry for 24 hours. Now, if you're gonna paint it, say you wanna put a, a, a thin wash paint on it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend a heavy coat of paint because it looked like a piece of plastic then. So I like a, uh, maybe 20 drops of paint to a, uh, 20 drops of water to one drop of paint. Uh, a thin wash, you can make it a blue bird, a red bird, a yellow bird, whatever you want. But it's thin enough that you can still see the wood grain through the wood, coming from the wood. And you know that it's a carved piece of, of wood rather than something that's, that's plastic painted. After it has dried thoroughly from the dip of, of the linseed oil, then I use uh, a semi-gloss uh, of two clear coats, transparent wood finish. This is sold at Clings Farm, and it's a great finish for any wood, and it gives it lasting protection. After all these finishes, we now have a comfort bird ready to give to Ronald McDonald House.